start the recording switches to the proper screen all right guys welcome to the first session of what could be very well multiple sessions of the uh, arcadia dominion miniature campaign uh just have a few quick announcements slash primers for today's session uh obviously we are on a alternating week schedule here for arcadia um for the foreseeable future, unfortunately, we are going to have to keep that. I've looked at my schedule, and we're just going to have to stick to every other week. Uh, but hey, we're still playing. That's what matters. Um, the other thing is, is that this Dominion mini campaign is pretty much going to last uh, for the month of October. Or if we like end in the middle of something, uh, we'll obviously resolve that arc. But the goal is to do two or three sessions overall, counting this one. So we'll see how things go. Uh, I think that's it for announcements, so let me just go ahead and jump into the opening monologue, and we can actually start playing. So, uh, where is it in my notes? There it is. So, the year is 2374. The Dominion War is ramping up from the occasional border skirmishes to full-on fleet engagements. Victory over the Federation is projected within the next year, and yet the Founders remain cautious. If the Tholians, Romulans, or really any major power in the Alpha Quadrant join forces with the Federation, then things could spiral out of control. Thus, the Founders have authorized a journey into the Mirror Universe. This expedition will take place on a prototype Vanguard warship using technology stolen by the Ferengi known as Chiron. I might be saying that wrong, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the goal is to make contact with the Mirror counterpart to the Dominion and assess whether or not they could be turned into an asset of war. All other details about this mission have been kept between the supervising founder and their Vorta. So we cut to the bridge of uh, JH72220XW, where everybody is preparing for the initial jump into the Mirror Universe. And uh, players, if we could start at the bottom and work our way up uh, in Discord, uh, if you could introduce your character, uh, tell us a little bit about them, and uh, include anything you would want either players or anyone listening to know. So, first, I believe we have our Cardassian. Okay, so I am playing Sage Ilrear, a, our Cardassian Helms operator. Um, he was raised on a Jem'Hadar world, and he will do anything to help the Dominion with their cause. And that's about all I have for him because I actually wasn't expecting to make it for this session. So hey, there you go. Small blessings. All right. Up next, we have our first. I am Talek Klon. I guess that's how you say it. I like combined a couple names together from previous episodes. So uh, yeah, I am uh, Jim Hadar first. Uh, basic, typical foot soldier, tactical. Um, yeah. And then uh, we go, since it seems Cro oh, Crowley's back. All right, Crowley, if you can introduce your character. I am Dominus. Uh, Dominus is a changeling. He's one of the founders. Uh, he is a unique one amongst his kind. He does not share the views of looking like Odo. He doesn't believe in trying to... Uh, what's the word? Uh, insult him with his limited transformation abilities, so he prefers to look like how he has on a few worlds he's been to. He stands pretty tall, taller than most of the Jem'Hadar as well, and he is wearing um, what looks like older-style Jem'Hadar armor. Um, also, he has uh, digi-legs, uh, digi-grade legs. And, okay. uh, yeah. All right, and then finally we have uh, our lovely Ferengi. I am Ferengi Specialist K. Ron. I specialize in computers and information, but above all else, profit. It's a good motive to have. Good motive to have. All right. So, uh, as you can see on the bridge, everyone is uh, at their positions. Uh, Dominus, of course, you are not actually touching the controls yourself. You have people for that. Uh, so you're just kind of supervising while uh, your Vorta overseer, Yagad, uh, is pretty much shouting orders, uh confirming readouts with other people, that sort of thing. Uh, Kron, you specifically are putting the final touches on the interface with your stolen technology. 
Now, I'm going to let you in character uh, define how you got this technology in the first place. The only, uh, I guess you would call it a limitation, is that it does have to be stolen from something. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, you see, uh, I, I can't do this voice all the time. All right. <laughs> so uh, I heard from a cousin's brother, so also my cousin, but I don't talk to him that often, uh, that he heard from his uncle that a couple of Ferengi had gone to the Mirror Universe and that they were uh, living in Deep Space Nine. So I put my feelers out and found out that uh, someone named Quark and his brother went over there. And it was pretty easy to get the technology from there once I raided Deep Space Nine's uh, internal access memory. Okay. So, uh, as I said, the, the initial scene, which is kind of get a feeler for the characters, is uh, you putting the final touches on that interface, and I'm going to let you guys uh, do a little bit of feeler RP before I start actually throwing rolls and other things at you. Your grad, is it? Oh, sorry, that's me. I was like, who? Oh, right, that's me. Uh, yes, he says, yes, Founder, what is it I can do for you? You're a new voter to me. I have a couple of questions. I live to serve. Do you know how to sing? Sing, Founder? Yes, the previous Vorta, Yelgrun, knew how to sing. I can't say that I do, no. Well then, give me the status of the ship. Well, the ship has been performing adequate, adequately. We are unsure how the Ferengi's device will uh, interface with our systems when activated, but we are fairly confident we will be able to make the transition without issue. Fairly confident doesn't inspire me at all. Well, of course, Let's Founder. Make sure. I simply mean that as this technology is new to us, there is always the possibility of something going wrong. Well, before we initiate, get a deep scan of it and study it. I want you to be able to understand its internal workings if we have to do any repairs. Of course, Founder. But perhaps, while that's going on, you may wish to interface with the Ferengi himself. He's over there in the corner of the bridge, if you did not see him already. He's such a tiny little thing, it's easy to step on him. Very well. I'll go over and visit. And uh, Dallas will walk on over and just lean over and look at <laughs> Kairon. So there's no way I wouldn't have heard that entire conversation with my ears. So before he even arrives, I'll turn around and I've got my wrists together with my fingers as far apart from each other as possible with like a meek bow. And I says, yes, Mr. F uh, Founder. Oh, God. Mm. You can call me Dominus. I wasn't aware founders chose names. I'm not a typical founder. A device. Will it work? It only usually works for one or two people, not a whole ship. What you do with the technology I gave you is on you. But I will do my best to make it work. See that it does. There's no profit in failure. And I'm sure there's no profit if you're no longer around to claim it. Make sure it succeeds. And if it does, I'll make sure you see lots of profits. Ah, you are familiar with the 125th rule of acquisition. You can't make a deal if you're dead. I'm, I'm familiar with monoforms and solids alike. All of you crave possessions. It's beneath me. Carry on. I'll turn around to kind of mock his it's beneath me silently and get back to work. Uh, I think uh, Yagad would see that and he would shoot you the most withering, scathing stare possible, but he knows better than to actually call you out on it. Uh, I'll side-eye Glenn. Uh, yes, Founder. That's the respect I look for. 
How do you find the equipment aboard this vessel? It'll serve our purposes if it fails at some point. I can make it work. You couldn't have found a better pilot for this mission, Founder. That's good to hear. Words are nice, though. I expect to see action. Of course. Very, very well. And uh, I'll go visit the first. Okay. So the first is uh, at the... It's weird on a, a Gemhardar bridge in my research. Like, obviously, the Vorta is at the quote-unquote main controls, but the second or what is actually the best readout on the bridge is where the first is currently situated status first founder we are ready for action or i am ready for action you're willing to die for me if need be of course founder mm. ah my gem hadar you are my favorite things to have been created such hostile and fierce creatures. Uh, I always like watching you fight. We need to s kind. swell with pride. Uh, uh, you'll see that. Having heard Dominus say this, I want to go and I want to look over at Yagad when he says that the Jim Hadar are the finest creation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gat doesn't really seem to mind this uh it's one of those things where the vorta are quite literally the most well not the most the biggest suck-ups that you could ever hope for so they're not gonna ever question what a founder says even if what the founder says kill yourself a vorta's gonna kill themselves it's it's that <laughs> level of devotion uh, i'm gonna reach out and place my hand on the chin of the first and just move his head around just to look at him it's like a inspecting a uh, piece of merchandise, pretty much. Like, they changed you a little bit in the last few years. They removed the plating on the armor and gave you scales instead. You know your thirst for combat's for me. I found a world that had such fierce fighters. I took that essence from them and instilled it into your kind. Sure, shooting a phaser or a blaster is fine, but you really crave to dig into your own opponents with your bare hands, don't you? Yes, Founder. <laughs> Make sure your men are all kept well nourished by the white. Ensure their loyalty. If this mission's a success, I personally hope to see all of you reach Elder. Thank no. you, Founder. Move back and... Stand behind the Vorta. Let's get underway. All right. So, uh, Yagad starts uh, shouting orders, uh, basically getting the ship. Uh, well, I guess kind of to, to set the, the scene of where the ship is in relation to everything else. So, uh, because, again, of the unknown element to the technology, you're not really near any colony or holding of the Dominion. You're kind of just in the middle of empty space. Just in case, you know, you blow a hole in the space-time continuum, you don't take anything with you. Um, but after, you know, a few moments of uh, system regulation, power readings, etc., etc., uh, the founder, or the, not the founder, the Vorta turns to you and says, We are ready to engage on your command, founder. Make it so. All right. So this is going to be our first roll of the little mini campaign. Uh, the activation of the mirror device is going to requ uh, require a control plus engineering. And the, si the, ah, the ship is going to assist with computers plus con. And the overall difficulty is going to be a two. And though it's not going to matter initially... Uh, the, uh, power requirement is four power overall. Alright, uh, I assume I have a station to work at? Yeah, yeah, it's just, I, there's not one on this, this, uh, this bridge picture, but yeah, you would have your own station. Okay, I'll go ahead and start on the roll. Uh, we don't have, we obviously don't have any, um, what's it called? Momentum. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I need to look up what computer expertise does, unless anyone else knows. Uh, computer I know. expertise, I believe, allows you to reroll 1d20 if you are using the computers. So that would apply here, but I will double check that. And you said it was what roll for the ship? Uh, computers and con. Uh, do you mean technical expertise? No, I've got... Uh, it's one page 137. Ah, here it is. Uh, whenever you attempt a task that involves the programming or study of a computer system, you may add one bonus d20 to your pool. Oh, so not for this. Okay. It'll come right. into play, but it's not what I thought it right. was. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'll go ahead and add one to threat because I don't want to be known to fail. Mm -hmm. So you said control engineering? Control engineering, correct. All right, I'll roll three dice adding one to threat. Okay. And just so you all aware, this will succeed at cost, but obviously that does mean complications. All right, so now help from the ship. Um, would I be able to use my transporters and replicators uh, focus because that is where we got the technology from. Yeah, I'll allow it. I also have like a reverse engineering and Ooh, a couple of other I stuff. see lots of green. That's a lot of green. All right, so hey, that's two momentum for you to start off with. All right, so uh, Kron, you press the uh, press a few buttons, uh, pause, press a few more buttons. And, uh, well, one of you track momentum, not both of you. Um, and the entire ship begins to shudder and shake. And uh, it starts to get to a point where you literally feel like the ship is going to just rip itself apart. And it gets to a point where uh, Yigad looks over at you and he opens his mouth to say anything. And then your entire reality for all of you, it goes purple. And I'm using the word purple specifically because this is an undescribable feeling. It is like tasting a smell or tasting a, a sight. It is just something that assails your senses and overloads your mind. Um, Dominus, I think this would even affect you, though it's going to be in a different form than everybody else's. Because obviously I don't know how uh, a founder's mind really works. So it's hard for me to say how it affects you. But for everyone else, there's this momentary overwhelming sense of just... I, I Like I said, it's hard to describe. It, it. I guess the best descriptor, now that I think about it, is like trying to describe music to a deaf man or color to a blind man. It's just that indescribable. And this sensation lasts for what feels like an eternity, but in reality is only five seconds. And at the end of the five seconds... Everything returns to normal. The ship begins to settle, and the normal ship sounds uh, return into place. Ferengi. Yes, Founder? Status. Um. Everything is in order. Helm, did it work? Is there a way to check if that worked? There is indeed. I was about to get to that. So, I need you to merely roll me a reason con difficulty one. Would an astro navigation focus possibly apply here? Oh, yeah. And yeah, Crowley, you should see when I uh, when I have to do the Mickey Mouse voice, which thankfully I've never had to do for this campaign. Oh, uh, okay. Have to get you to. So, I do have a question for your last name. I mean, obviously your rank is Glenn, but how do you say your last name again? Ilrear. Ilrear. Okay. Uh, so Ilrear, uh, I'm going to say you're looking at the readout. So there's one of two possibilities that occurs to me, but you, of course, can, you know, come up with your own. Either you haven't moved at all, or you've made the transition and, strangely, you've ended up in literally the exact same place. And no, the ship does not help with this, unfortunately. 
Well, Founder, either we didn't move at all, or the transition to the mirror universe was so perfect that we are in the same spot we were in our universe, Founder. Interesting. You gotta check our communications relay, see if we can make contact with anything. This will prove if we have shifted. Okay. So this I'm going to make a uh, Talak Khan roll. Uh, Talak Khan, if you could roll me as I pull up correct focuses and whatnot. Uh, Talak Khan, if you could roll me a control and we're going to call this a command. And the ship is going to assist you with comms and security. And the overall difficulty here is going to be a one. So hopefully some momentum for you guys. You said uh, comms and security for the ship? Correct. Okay, well, there's the one success you need already. Let's see if the ship gets you another. Nope, ship doesn't get you another. Uh, so, Talak Khan, you're looking at your readouts, and uh, at first you wonder if perhaps the instrumentation was damaged in the transition, but then you realize the reason you're not getting a reply back from any nearby comm buoys is because they're not there. All of the comm buoys are gone. Perfect. That means it worked. You get prepare the next step of this mission. Uh, you get kind of turns to you and uh, leans in to whisper. Um, uh, Founder, it does call for us to head to the Pakara system, is that still your intention? That is the next step, is it not? I simply wish to confirm, Founder. Then you have confirmation. Very well. Uh, he stands back up straight and starts uh, barking orders. He says, Helm, set course for Pakara Prime. Uh, take us there at... And he kind of looks at uh, Dominus to get a gauge for how fast he should go. Let's not overtax this new vessel. Cruising speed will be fine. Warp 7, please. Of course. And I will plot the course and speed and push, push the button. Okay. So, uh, again, this is going to be kind of an opportunity for you guys to mingle in character. But at Warp 7, the journey will take two total days. Uh, so you guys have two days to RP amongst yourselves, but if you would rather us skip ahead, I can do that too. Uh, as we enter warp, I would like to tell uh, Yagad something. Sure. I'm assuming in kind of a confident type thing. Nope, just an order. Okay. Yagad, uh, yes, transition sir. was rather violent to the ship. Make sure that a full diagnosis is done aboard the vessel. Make sure there's Nothing wrong. I will endeavor to get you one as soon as possible, Founder. Good. In the meantime, let's enjoy this trip. The worries of having to deal with the Federation can be ignored for a bit. All right, so uh, if someone could open uh, Yagad sheets for me, I need him to roll me a... Oh boy, what would this be? Uh, if he could roll me a, we'll say an insight and command, or insight security, I'll let you guys pick whichever. Uh, his difficulty is going to be a two. Okay. Uh, would any of Yagad's focuses apply here? No. Um, from what I remember from his sheet, uh, I didn't give him anything. Yeah. Oh, well, no, his observation focus would apply. Okay. Be here who hasn't rolled that much yet. <laughs> I haven't, but I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and roll for him then if n there's no opposition there. Roll well. I'll say that much. Our founder be okay with me spending one of our momentum to give him a third dice? The founder is pleased with this option. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, unless you nothing. want to spend uh, your remaining momentum and a threat to get rid of that complication, we are going to have a complication. Um, we'll go ahead and use that last momentum and give you a threat to avoid the complication. Okay. Yes. Alrighty. So, uh, what happens as Yagad, uh, I keep wanting to say Egad, but that's the whole reason I picked the name, because I'd remember it. Um, as he looks over the readouts, uh, he seems to be getting a lot more nervous. And he's stealing glances at Chiron, or Chiron. And eventually he turns to you, Founder, and says, uh, My apologies, Your Grace, but it does appear that we have a small situation that has developed from the transition. What is it? Well, again, I am not the expert on the technology. We would have to ask our Ferengi. He hesitates and uses the word guest very hesitantly. Uh, guest, but... It appears the device has overloaded. It will require repair with materials we currently do not have on the ship. Uh, I am also getting confirmation that several microfractures have opened up in our warp core. Uh, it is safe for normal travel, but another transition could very well cause a breach. And let's maintain. Let's make repairs. Let's drop uh, out of warp. Founder, I, I do not wish to contradict you, but we do not have the materials for such delicate repair on hand. And where would in this universe? Well, as it so happens, sir, uh, if we are headed to Pakara Prime, as long as the dilithium mines there are still operational or are otherwise present in the current universe we find ourselves in, we should be able to scrounge the materials we need there. Very well. Let's make sure that the warp core has ample protection against any future breaches or any worsening effects of these microfractures. I, as your will be done, Founder. And, uh, Kron, if you could now roll me a Insight Engineering, uh, difficulty one, and let's see what you would be able to tell. Because, uh, again, the, the Vorta knows enough to do general stuff, but you, being the specialist here, probably can figure out some more. Okay. Um, I'm curious if my testing a theory talent would come into play. It's whenever it's about the same scientific field that I've already succeeded at yeah. so far. Oh, it would? Yeah, I would say anything involving the mirror device will tap that talent. I get an extra d20 and uh, troubleshooting focus. Yep. Ooh, I see red. All right, well, here's the thing. You succeeded, but you do have a complication. So do you want to give me threat, or do you want to take the complication? Hmm... What does the rule of acquisition say there, Ferengi? <laughs> uh, let's do the thread. Okay. All right, so, uh, Kron, you're looking over your own personal readouts because your console is uh, much more detailed in the diagnostics it gives compared to the Vorda's, and you're seeing that he is generally correct. Um, a few of the more delicate delicate components have burned out. It's nothing you can't fix. It just will require time and materials. Um, you do have in your personal stash, the one you've kept from the Overseer, uh, you do have enough to repair it yourself, but it would involve contradicting the Vorta in public, or at least to the Founder. Uh, I have enough right now to repair the... Okay. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I will I will suggest to the Overseer, uh, if I may leave my station, I will go observe the um, existing device so that we might prevent any uh, overloads on a, f on a future trip. 
the overseer just points at one of the uh, many Jem'Hadar who are just kind of standing on the bridge and says, you, with him, make sure he doesn't blow up anything. And yeah, uh, I would assume, well, let, let's ask a question. Would you have set up this device in main engineering? Uh, would you have set it up wherever would have been, quote unquote, thematically appropriate? Or would you have literally just thrown it in a room and hooked it up to a power conduit? Well, this is like a prototype vessel, right? Correct. Uh, I would say it's in a room near engineering. Okay. So, uh, we'll just... Yeah, I don't really have a map for this, so we'll continue to use Theater of the Mind here, but I'll just put you upper right corner of the map, so to symbolize your way. And uh, the moment you're gone, uh, and we'll get to you in a moment, uh, Yagad just kind of gives a very deep sigh of relief and says, I never liked Ferengi. They're so annoying to deal with. I actually find them quite fascinating. We built our whole society based off owning and exchanging goods. It's interesting to see how they have survived for so long, such as a frail species. And uh, Yagad actually looks over at uh, Alir and he says, uh, Alir, were you not one who read the Ferengi rules of acquisition before? Or am I confusing you with First Telecon? Um, I'm not too familiar with our Ferengi friend's rules of acquisitions. The question might be better posed to our Jem'Hadar friend. All right, so... Uh... He looks across the bridge at you first. I know nothing of the Ferengi, nor do I want to. <laughs> Yagad looks a little confused, and he says, Where? I know someone on this ship besides the Ferengi knew it. Hmm. Oddity. I'll look into that. It's troubling, but it's not too much of a concern. And uh, right at that moment... Uh, I need uh, a Lear. I need you to roll me a Daring plus Con. Okay. Uh, the difficulty here will be a... We'll call it a 2. Okay. And the ship is going to assist you with... Uh, s let's do Engines and Con. And the overall difficulty is going to be a 3. Um, would my push the limits talent possibly apply here? It would indeed, so I believe that knocks the difficulty down to a two. Alrighty. And then would uh helm operations be a focus here? Oh yes. Okay. So someone wants to roll for the ship since he's doing his own sheet. I'll grab it. It's engines and con one dice, right? Correct. While that's happening, I have a question. I might have an answer. Uh, so looking at the device, is the plan to completely build a new one once there's new supplies, or just fix this one? Uh, that is entirely up to you. You're the specialist here, so you can make the call on that. Okay, so uh, yeah, you guys get uh, one momentum. Nice. Uh, so the reason I asked for this, ta this task is this. Um, you guys are traveling at warp. Uh, you're having, you know, nothing really standing out to you. But then, out of nowhere, uh, your console begins blaring at you that you're in a decaying orbit. And you have to, well, you have mere milliseconds to react, but you wrench the ship uh, to the left, which causes everyone to kind of shudder and swerve in place. Um, but uh, as you swerve the ship and readjust its course... Uh, you realize that you have just narrowly avoided uh, entering into the atmosphere of a rogue planet. Status report. Uh, we're we're okay, Founder, but it seems like we've entered the atmosphere of a planet of some sort. Uh, Overseer, who should be running a scan of this planet? He just sort of says to the bridge at large, someone get me a scan on that. Our sense is malfunctioning. How did we not pick this up? I do not know, Founder, but I am hoping whoever reports will have that answer. 
Better be a satisfactory spark too. Uh, what would the role be to run those scans? Uh, well, let's have uh, you and Talat Khan both roll. Well, one of you will assist and the other will not. Um, I would say this would be a reason science uh, assisted by the ship's sensor science. And Ouch. I believe since this is an experimental ship, I gave you advanced sensors. I did. Cool. Um, so the overall difficulty accounting for the talent will be just a two. Let's see. Uh, first, what's your reason in science total? Uh, eight. Mine is a nine, so I guess I'll do it. Nice. All right, there's one success. Are we ro rolling for the ship? Uh, we're rolling for the ship, and you may assist him. Okay, how do I do an assist? I don't think I've ever done that before. Uh, an assist is just your standard rolling, uh, except you only roll one dice. All right, there's an assist from Talak Khan. Now let's see if the ship gets you a momentum. And then what was it for the ship? Uh, sensors Science. Sensor science, okay. Sensors and science. Alrighty, very good. Alright, uh, we'll give Crowley a little bit, because uh, this obviously pertains to him. Do, 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 do. See, so, yeah, I'm very glad I uh, I was able to find this map. I was kind of worried that I'd have to, like, kitabosh a Star Trek Online map for this. But uh, luckily, it seemed oh. that someone had taken the time to do the bridge, which is all I can really ask for. Complete with uh, static Jim Hadar standing by the doorway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to do an inside joke where it's not actually him. I mean, everybody else sees one. But if someone were to literally go up and put a hand through him, he's just a hologram. But I figured that that might be a little too silly for the atmosphere I was going for. Okay, Crowley's clear. All right, so Crowley, uh, now that you're back. So uh, you guys did get momentum from the task, and the result is this. Uh, the reason that your sensors did not detect the rogue planet before you were almost colliding into it is because this rogue planet is obviously not charted on your maps you were going off of uh the quote-unquote prime universe's maps and you know rogue planets are notoriously hard to detect sometimes but you as the dominion as a whole had mapped most of them in the area so there's some sort of discrepancy between uh your logs of where rogue planet should be and where this one is um now, it's not really a fault of your sensors. It's more a fault of relying too much on uh, previous knowledge, if that makes any sense. All right. Overseer. Yes, Founder. Launch two probes. One ahead of the other. Slightly different warp speeds. Have them scan and then send information back to us. Of course, Founder. Is there anything in, uh, anything in specific you want me to focus on? Just the region and the corridor we're going to be traveling through. Understood. He uh, launches sure. a few more probes and reports. Well, I am uh, pleased to re uh, pleased to report, Founder, that it appears that our journey to uh, our destination will be unhindered from now forward. Good. Anything interesting on this planet that we're worth looking into? Uh, the rogue planet, sir. Uh, one moment. And he kind of looks at the readouts. Uh, standard Class D planetoid, sir. Uh, has some rare uh, minerals deposits, but nothing that we would require. Very well. Let's continue on. All right. So let's, uh, let's go to uh, K-Ron down as he's inspecting the device. So obviously you felt the ship swerve. And uh, the Jem'Hadar that's with you just kind of looks about, but then just settles back into resting position. I briefly contemplate asking the Jem'Hadar what had happened, and then 
realize that's not a useful uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, and I will go ahead and remove the uh, device. Okay, so the device itself, as I'm imagining it, but we can always uh, kind of come to a, a consensus. Um, the device, as I imagine it, would be about half the size of a photon torpedo uh, in a similar sort of casing. So it's a almost black, opaque, uh, kind of plastic-like material for you know a, a visual standpoint, but obviously it's not made of plastic. Um, and inside the device proper is a, I call it a mirror transporter, um, but it is essentially taking the technology that uh, Quark and pretty much everyone on DS9 used to get between the universes. It's that just scaled up to work for his ship. Yeah, I'm, I'll just take the, the the transporter part out of the, the warhead, basically. Okay. And uh, what are you doing with it out of curiosity? Uh, I want to take it to somewhere where I can work on it a little bit better. Okay. Um, I would say you would have your own little lab set aside for this. Um, well, hmm. yeah, I'll take it over to the lab and just do diagnostics of it. But once we get the materials, that's where I'll be, I'll be finishing my work on it. Um, unless there's more work to be done in the rest of the device. Uh, it does not appear to be the case. So you just need to replace a few components and it'll be fine. Or at least you think so anyway. Okay. All right. So while he's working on that, a uh, reminder that there is a bit of travel time here. So did anyone else have any specific scenes or conversation we wanted to have, or shall we skip ahead a little bit? Uh, I'll make myself available for anyone to talk to. If anyone wants to. Um, If I have permission to leave the bridge from the founder, I would actually like to give... Would I know that K-Ron's in his lab or no? I think it's probably a fair assumption that you could find him there. Okay. I would actually like to go visit our Ferengi friend. Okay. If I have permission, that is. You do indeed. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll just put us on theater of the mind for this. Yeah, you guys can uh, find each other, no problem. Uh, S Specialist k -Ron, I actually... Uh, would you mind if I came in? Just don't touch anything! You see him kind of, like, jolt a little bit. Okay. Um, Overseer Yigod was talking about the Ferengi rules of acquisition just earlier and not being familiar with them myself, and seeing as how we had a Ferengi on board, I figured I should ask if you give me a very... whatever rundown you can as you're working and while we're in warp. Uh, one second, and I'll go over to a data pad and downloading something onto a chip. These are the Frankie rules of acquisition. Worst possible formatting. Okay. Well, then I guess I'll take this somewhere and I'll read it. Uh, thank you, specialist. And I'll walk out. Okay. And, and so, so okay. like, there's no paragraph spaces. Like, you can barely tell where one sentence ends and the next one begins. Because this is the cheapest way to buy the Ferengi rules of acquisition. Is it also in Comic Sans? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> uh, That's great. It's the one um, thing I will always appreciate our Comic Sans joke, because as a letterer, my god, am I tired of having that conversation with people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Dumbers would be in, I, I don't know, would this ship have an observation land or anything like that, or just... Like, uh, the many don't hang out anywhere, so no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, it's very military, very Spartan. Uh, you've got the bridge. You have what are essentially double, if not triple, bunks for the Jem'Hadar. Uh, then you have places like engineering, uh, which is a little bit more open. But for the most part, not a whole lot going on in this ship. Uh, even your own quarters, uh, they are lavish by Dominion standards. So there's actually a bed... Uh, there is a variety of uh, decoration of your own choosing, but uh, it's one of those things where unless you specifically asked for something, uh, it's just Spartan in general. Uh, I guess I'd have a, 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 an area of the ship where I could 
uh, do some hand-to-hand -hand stuff with uh, Jem'Hadar. Oh, there's definitely places for that. And uh, let me get some uh, tokens going here. Let's see. So there's Dominus. You're chilling there. Uh, if I read your mind, or at least I think I know where you're going with this, is your intention to spar with some of the Jem'Hadar? Uh, see if they're willing to. Okay. Uh, let me posit this question. Would you extend that offer to Kalakan? Yeah. Or Talakan, sorry. Indeed I would. I don't know. Would I want to fight with my god? I mean, it's one of those things where, as a warrior, you've always had that sort of deviant thought of, could I take him? And if he orders it, you pretty much have to anyway. Okay. I'll go for it. Cool. So, uh, if you will imagine a very, what is essentially a glorified, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, cargo bay that has been converted into a sparring arena for the Jem'Hadar warriors aboard. Uh, Dominus and First, you guys go into this sort of, uh, what's the name of that episode in DS9? The one where they actually have the arena. Um... The one where they're, they're prisoners and uh, Worf has to keep fighting in the arena to stay alive. Hopefully you know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, that's the sort of arena that's been set up. And yeah. it's one of the things where you can just fight till you're knocked out. But if you wish to yield early, uh, there's sort of a button on the ring of the arena that you can press to yield. Um, it's also one of the things that anytime you get knocked down, you have to get up and press that same button... But this time it means that you're willing to continue. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to say that uh, this of course draws a little bit of a crowd, uh, mostly Jem'Hadar. Uh, they're very eager to see their god uh, in action. And uh, we'll say that Talat Khan and Dominus, you kind of square up across each other. And I'd like to know uh, whose birthday is closest to today's date. Mine's in March. Okay. July July 15th. All right. Well, then first Talak Khan, you are allowed to make the first action. All right. I'm going to go barehanded, barefisted. I'm going to go straight in for an attack. Okay. So uh, as a melee attack, this is an opposed uh, daring plus security. And uh, the base difficulty is a one. And what we're interested in here are number of successes. And Ty will go to the attacker. So if you would both uh, roll Daring Security and let's see what happens. Okay, I have a focus in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh, yeah. So do I. I love how in every game we find a way to fight each other. It's great. <laughs> we'll have a fight club no matter what. Oh, ooh, ooh, Dominus, that's that's not good. Um, okay, I mean, bad. Yeah, that's that's that's. For a founder, bad. the complication is that he kills the Jim Hadar. Snapped his neck. Oh no, I wouldn't be that evil. Um, but I'll keep that in my back pocket for later. Uh, so Talak Khan, uh, you are uh quite able to get a very nasty hit on the founder. Um. But I'm going to leave it up to you um, how to describe the attack and whether or not you would be holding back at all. Uh, sorry, I was in the text box. Um, I have, I have like, yeah. Anyway, um, I think, uh, I think at this stage I would not hold back. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm just going to rush in and just with a straight uppercut okay. to the jaw area. All right. So if you're not holding back, go ahead and roll your full unarmed damage and let's see what happens. Oh, God. Okay. So I have intense and vicious one. You have mean right hook. So yeah. Yeah. And martial Ooh. artist. Um, oh, goodness. <laughs> there's a reason so he's that... the first. Yeah, so That's good. I just rolled it. The damage dice on the, the chart here, right? Uh, yeah, you can roll it there, um, but you can also just do six challenge dice, and we'll just count effects that way. How's the Vorta taking this? Uh, the Vorta is mortified. Uh, he <laughs> cannot believe that this is happening. 
This is great. <laughs> okay, so that is five, six, seven. A total of seven damage. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, founders don't start off with resistance, do they? Uh, let me double check. Do, do, do. Organic. Character has the character also has a resistance of. Wait, what, is that a? F I think that's oh. when you're shifted into something other than a humanoid. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be that'd be insane. A resistance of four. Uh, the no. Okay, so we're now in the interesting position where you are going to take an injury unless you either spend your determination or the two momentum you have. Uh... Yeah, I want to make this a good fight. Um, I'm going to use... You guys okay with me using momentum? <laughs> You're the boss! <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll use the two momentum. Okay. All right, so you're still going to take the uh, seven stress, but, uh, yeah, you managed to stay on your feet. Uh, and I would say, as a, uh, as a founder, you are impressed with the level of ferocity that your first has delivered to you. And well, I think I'm you more specifically are ecstatic. Yeah, I have a big grin. Whatever damage he did just seals back up, of course, because, you know, liquid. Mm -hmm. But I'm just smiling. I was like, good. That's the fight I want to see in my Jem'Hadar. Let's see how you can survive this. And I'm going to... My turn, right? Yep, your turn. Can I, uh, can I use quick to action? <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you have quick to action as a I talent, do. I'll let it happen. I'm going to... I'm gonna smack him again. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to really impress him right now. <laughs> I love it. So uh, you're still rolling. Everybody is still rolling a daring security. Uh, the difference here, uh, Talak Khan, is that now you're at a difficulty two, whereas Dominus is still a difficulty one. Okay, so no successes from Talak Khan, but uh, let's see what uh, Dominus rolls. Okay, so Dominus, you are able to score a hit on your first. I'm, I got a little I'm, too cocky. I'm going to be nice and just do uh, just a normal unarmed one. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, you have the option of holding back, but that is enough to put him down, I believe. Yeah. I forget oh, yeah. if Jemadar have innate resistance. I guess I should look that up real fast. No, I don't. I didn't, at least I didn't come with one when I was creating it. Let's see. It takes, uh, let's see. The Dominion. Uh, do, 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 do. It looks like they have an innate two resistance. Oh. Well, that's, that's a nice surprise. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you are reducing that damage down to three stress. So... Dominus, if you would describe your attack as he takes that stress damage. Uh, so he paid me uh, with a uppercut. I'm going to pay him in kind with uh, an uppercut as well. Okay. <laughs> so uh, your strike is not as powerful as his, either because you're holding back or simply because he was a little bit more prepared for it. But uh, the effect on the crowd is uh, sort of a an excited hum or an excited buzz as the Jem'Hadar are taking notes, as it were. They are very focused on um, not only replicating what they're seeing, but in committing it to memory. Uh, so now it's my turn? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to... Uh, I, I remember this. Uh, Klein did this. I'm going to aim my fist. <laughs> okay. And I am going to uh, try and try and give him a good old unarmed strike punch. Okay, so I believe that means you get to reroll one d twenty, and it's again another opposed daring security here. All right, so that's two successes for Dominus. Ooh, but Talakan mm. is having none of it. Um. So, again, Talakan, my question is, are you holding back, or are you going full damage? Um, I'm going full damage. All right, so let's see what you roll, and then we'll deal with describing it. we get any momentum, by the way? Um, I'm specifically not letting either of you get momentum. Um, right. But you can, of course, give me threat if you so wished. Okay. 
But yeah, uh, unless you want to give me a threat to reroll those three zeros, it will be just four damage. No, I'll just go with the four. Okay. So, uh, Dominus and Talakan, you guys meet kind of in the middle of the arena. And uh, Talakan, you uh, give him another meaty strike. Uh, we'll say this time across his chest. Uh, on anyone else, it would have knocked the wind out of him. But, uh, you know, Founder, they don't really have lungs to deal with. But, uh, Dominus, how much stress do you have left before you're tapped out? I have one. Ooh, very nice. So, strangely, and perhaps a little bit mortified, you realize that your founder is another good punch away from uh, having to yield. And I would say in the history of the Dominion, a founder has never lost a fight. I'm going to hit the button. Okay, so immediately the fight is concluded. I just grin. Like, first, if this mission is a success and you survive, you'll be joining me. I'll make sure to see you as an honored elder. It would be my honor, Founder. <laughs> and I'll just give an eye to uh, the Vorta. He looks like he's on the precipice of screaming at Talakan, but he keeps it together, barely, and says, Ah, well, that was was very exciting, Founder. Um, shall I, uh, see it to your quarters? Why do I need to go there? I simply wished you, thought you might wish to, uh, well, relax after your victory. <laughs> Invite the two monoforms to my quarters. Prepare a meal for them. Of Something course. fitting for their palate. Of course, sir. Um, I will do just that. And let me, uh, let me get some tokens on here. Let's see. So, uh, let's see. Let's put you there, you there. And then uh, do, 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 do these two. Yeah, wrong layer. There we go. All right, so uh, all of you kind of end up in, unless you don't want to go, you have that option. Uh, all of you are going to end up in the uh, room of the, gem or not of the room of the Gemara, the room of the founder. And as I said, uh, very Spartan, unless he says otherwise. And there has been a table set up with chairs and uh, they have a manner of delicacies. Um, obviously, Telecon. As far as I know, Dominion don't eat, so there's a fresh vial of white for you. A fresh vial of white waiting for you. Yes. Um, it's in a bowl with warm water around it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alir, uh, there is a bottle of Canar, as well as a few uh, Cardassian delicacies. And then Kron, there are two grubs, as well as a can of Slogo Cola. Uh, where's uh, my Vorta? Is he with us too? Uh, your Vorta is present. I guess I really should put his token on here. Uh, your your Vorta is present, but he is very decidedly uh, not a part of the eating. He's just sort of waiting in the wings, as it were. Um, please, sit down. Enjoy yourselves. I immediately do so. Okay. I'm assuming everybody else is, so yeah. Meal commences. Uh, Dominus, I'm pretty sure you're not eating, so I guess you're just sort of sitting there glaring at people. No, I'll have my hand on the table, on my plate, and I'll be cut into something every now and then, eating it and just watching them. Ah, the Odo thing, where he mimics uh, actually yeah. eating. Yeah. Okay. I just look at the Sluggo Cola and think to myself, the slimiest cola in a different galaxy. <laughs> what, do you uh, think? What, what else was put out for me? Uh, two grubs and uh, a few Ferengi delicacies. I'll get working on them. Okay. 
Although, I'll sniff them first to make sure they're not poisoned. Uh, roll me uh, insight security, please. Difficulty zero. I have a focus in hazard awareness. <laughs> yeah, that would fly. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, you get, you get a momentum. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Nothing to worry about. Hey, Rod. I have no intentions of poisoning you if you think that's the case there. The food is your food. If I wanted you dead, the Jem'Hadars first would do it. I would do it. <laughs> Force of habit. Understandable. I'm assuming you've made enemies with your little pilfering of this technology. No, they don't even know. Uh, then you have proved to me that you're more valuable than what I thought you originally were. You're able to acquire things with ease without being noticed. That's talent. That's business. <laughs> I have decided to have this little dinner with you other solids. I want to hmm, dissuade and dissolve any illusions of the founders you may have. If you have questions, feel free and ask. And I think that silence is in character. Like, it's one of those things where this wasn't a question anyone was expecting at all. No one? No curiosities? No interests? No desire to learn anything about the Founders? And uh, Yagad actually speaks from behind you. If you don't mind me saying so, Founder, it is not our place to question the God. Well... I think it is good to ask questions every now and then so you may gain an understanding. To learn how insignificantly small you can be in the grand scheme of things. But it also gives you perspective. Perspective on how the wor world and the universe work. And if you want to rule it, you need to understand how everything moves and turns. That's why I like to seek out questions. Learn the answers. With these answers, I can then change the course of civilizations. I've watched monoforms rise and fall. I have seen some of their cultures make great arts, musicians, beautiful breathtaking sculptures. And then in the blink of an eye, gone. Because of some petty squabble. The Dominion are here to finish that. No more squabbling. No more rise and fall, just maintained. Every culture within the Dominion has a place. And that place is to work together. I want to see the Dominion rule everyone, not because we can, but because we have to. Because without us, most moniforms will be gone. And despite some of my misgivings towards some of the monoforms out there, the ones I've encountered, not all of them have been... bad. Most of them have been beautiful. And I want to keep that beauty. This is why we do what we do. We all have different objectives in mind, but the goal is the same. That's why the Dominion made the Jem'Hadar. You're more than just a boogeyman we send in to scare someone to keep in line. But you are sent in to force them to stand in line. You take the hope of them rebelling against us and you crush it. The Vorta come in off an olive branch. They go, take this, join us, and see the flaws of your ways. For a better tomorrow, be one with the Dominion. That's what I want to do to the Alpha Quadrant. That's why we're here looking for the others in this mirror universe. I want to see the whole 
galaxy under our control, so that life may thrive. That makes me think, Founder, you and the Ferengi are not so different. Rule of Acquisition 45, expand or die. That's a good rule to have. Um, Founder, if, if I may. Hmm. You're the only Founder I've personally encountered. Uh, what are some of the others like if you've met them? We're all one, but we're all individuals. Cryptic, but true. I am... What you would consider the odd one out, though. I prefer to visit worlds firsthand, live among the creatures for a while, learn from them, and then report back. This is why I was chosen for this mission. I'm more adaptable to new surroundings. But we all have a sense of justice, a sense of control. Different drives, but again, the same goal. And I'm also more acclimated to being alone longer than most. Well, thank you. This uh, new information makes me look forward to serving with you even more, Founder. I do hope that the Dominion wins this. Dominion pushes through. I do enjoy visiting Cardassia Prime when I can. I do love the desert. You see, Sage's chest is kind of filled with pride, and he will continue eating. How does uh, he gad look? <laughs> uh, I mean, he's... Uh, it's hard to really describe in my mind. He's somewhere between reverent and... Uh, a little bit curious himself. Uh, I mean, it, it would be obvious to you at least that he has a million questions he would like to ask of his god, but he's holding himself back, most definitely. Well, if you have no more questions, please eat, and if you think of anything, please ask. Is it... Would it be obvious to the rest of us that Yigad wants to ask questions? Um, I would say the only reason Dominus knows and the rest of you don't is because Vorda are kind of keyed a certain way. Um, but you could certainly attempt to do a uh, an insight con at uh, difficulty two to see if you notice. Ooh. Yeah, he looks fine to you. <laughs> I had a fun little speech there. I didn't intend to go that on that long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like, perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, I like the little creepy monologue there. It's great. <laughs> uh, well, uh, on that note, uh, let's skip ahead a little bit so that everybody is back on the bridge. And uh, you are arriving in the Picara system. And let me actually uh, put that in chat so we know how to say it and spell it. Um, oh, okay. I, I thought it looked like Picard's beard. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, the Picara system is actually not really... How do I want to say this? In a cosmic sense, it's boring. Uh, it has three Class D planetoids and a single Class M world that all sort of bathe in the light of a blue giant star. And uh, as you drop out of warp on the edge of the system, uh, obviously preliminary sensor scans go off. Uh, try to, you know, basic, is the colony there? Or the, is the dilithium still there? Things of that nature. And while... The sensors are able to confirm that there is deposits of dilithium on the planet. It is not detecting any, um, shall we say, colony from this distance. So the Vorta reports, uh, Founder, we are not detecting the colony. The dilithium appears to still be there. Um, however, I'm... This is odd. I, there appears to be some faint residual ion trails in the immediate vicinity. 
yet I'm not detecting any vessel within a radius of five light years. Let's go to... Uh, what's the equivalent of yellow alert for a Dominion ship? I think they're just perpetually on red alert. Oh, okay. There we go. Let's stay on guard, then. Let's keep scanning for anything that may have cloaked or is trying to hide from us. They may have picked us up on approach. Okay. So I'm going to put us on this map here. And uh, you guys are more specifically right about here. So, uh, you know, you're running some scans, you're doing your thing, and then all of a sudden, uh, almost like they came out of nowhere, uh, three vessels of unknown configuration uh, immediately begin blaring on the sensors. Like, they literally came out of the background radiation, and they're now... Um, they're now obviously there. And you are getting a transmission. So the Vorta says, uh, Sir, uh, we just have three vessels drop out around us, and they're hailing us. Give me one of the headsets. Oh, yeah, you would, you would have one of the headsets. No, no worries. Yeah, right on. I was like, display them. All right, so appearing before you is a humanoid approximately six feet tall. They are clad in a helmetless dark blue body armor that glows in places throughout the suit. Two wicked-looking daggers rest at their sides, but what really stands out is the head of the creature, where the founders like to call species that are not them solids, and quote-unquote solids like calling founders quote-unquote liquids, this would be something both would call gases. Though humanoid in design, the entire head is an opaque, swirling miasma of glowing purple gases, and a length of gas trails behind the head, much like hair, if the hair was made out of a dense nebula. And the being says, I am Protector Setna of the Dominion. You will identify yourselves immediately and explain your presence in our space. And that's where we're going to take our break. So, uh, if you guys could be back no later than, uh, let's say, 440, please. And I am going to play some music on Roll20, so just make sure your volume is not blaring. Alrighty. Alright, BRB. Okay. Uh, who's still here? I am. I just had a quick thing I was going to say, but I just got so enthralled and doing under a whole freaking speech. It happens. It's fine. I really like Dominus. <laughs> It's interesting having having a founder on board, so you know. <laughs> yeah, like, I like the contrast that uh, like he looks intimidating, but to me he hasn't felt intimidating. Like he's not, he's been like more approachable. Like out of all the founders, I'd think he's the most approachable. One. It's like, hey, can I get another? Like, yeah, sure, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Give a little gem hard our kid a gun. I'm like, you go shoot those Federation now. <laughs> I, I, I like being in Janice's shoes. This is kind of fun. I like Helms. Yeah. Yeah, we need to see what, uh, who we all have here for next session. Yeah. Hopefully Janice and Hyde can make it. I won't be here. I made it here through luck. <laughs> really happy playing a changeling. Uh, I've always liked them since, uh, Odo. Right. Trying to find a picture is hard, though, but then I realized I have of, uh, the talent that lets me just look like anyone. And I don't need a bucket. <laughs> I, have, I have mastered my morphogenic matrix. There you go. Actually, have you read the uh, Changeling feats or talents? I haven't, actually. So, you have the Morphogenic Matrix, which you normally take, which is what Oda would have. Mm -hmm. But you have to revert every now and then and rest. But if you take the Morphogenic Mastery, <laughs> you can uh, fool um, 
people pretty damn convincingly. Hmm. It says, you assume the form of a specific individual, mimicking their appearance and personality sufficiency, that even close friends may be unable to discern the truth. Huh. I don't know what the difficulty for that is, but that's damn good. Yeah. And now I'm muting myself for the stream here. Uh, of course, thank you for watching, either live or on YouTube later. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, if you are subscribed to literally anyone using Twitch Prime, you do have to manually up that Twitch Prime subscription at the end of every month. Again, I think it's dumb, but in a sense it works because it lets you kind of move your free sub around to whoever you so wish. Um, other than that, um, I may have to replace the player here in Arcadia. Uh, they have been uh, unable to make sessions consistently, and that's one of my pet peeves. So, uh, If you're interested in possibly joining the Arcadia game, uh, just kind of watch either on Twitter or if you're in my Discord. Uh, I'll post a link to an app, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that situation develops. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and unmute myself for everybody else. Oh, you guys were away from that. Yep. And I'm back. Hey guys. Hey. Welcome back. I am back as well. Cool. So, Bryn, how does it feel to uh, be the one to make the injuries on people and not the one to patch it all up? <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Probably feeling the same way I felt when I started playing Klein after I stopped playing in the lawn for a hot minute. Still oh, yeah. Kind of I'm still trying to determine if I'm bringing him back or not. With the counselor? Yeah. I think I've talked to the GM about possibly just turning him into my supporting character. Because the one I made initially, I don't use at all. <laughs> right. So let's see. Who all has crooked action? I do. I don't. I have it too. <laughs> I think all of my things are like con except for one. Did you take any of them uh, from the new book? Um, let's see. My talents are precise evasion, persistent targeting, uh, push the limits, and I have veteran. So no. So I was gonna suggest a talent, and I'll let you fix. Assuming we go to a session two with these guys, I'm hoping we will, but. Uh, there is a talent, I believe, in the command book, uh, multidiscipline, and it allows you to use your con score in place of, I believe it's science, security, whatever. Uh, what page in the book is that on? Uh, I'd have to look it up myself. 45, I believe. Because Crowley has that talent. Oh, yep, there we go. Multi-disciplines. No, a little that's multi-discipline. That's uh, oh. that's the additional role. Where's the one for con? Uh, multitasking. That's what it is. Um, okay, so. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's page fifty. It's not quite what I was thinking it was, but it would let you basically fire phasers using con. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, just sort of waiting on uh, Karan to come back. Whenever he's back, we can uh, resume what we're doing.
And I'm very sad that the uh, Cardassian music from Armada 2 was not in uh, Fan Burst, because I would have used that in a, har- on a, uh, in a heartbeat. I used the Klingon music yesterday for the BRB. Aw, oh, would have been fun if it was there. Yeah. Only ones that are in there are the uh, Klingon and the Borg. And the Borg one I don't like personally, so... Did anyone else pick up uh, Bridge Commander? Oh, I looked I love at it. Um, I guess my my main concern is finding a steady group to play it with. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It looks like a fun game, but it's one of those games where I gotta have a dedicated group that will play it. Wait, Bridge Commander? I'm thinking of something else then. I was thinking Bridge Crew. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know what you oh. mean. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I well, picked it up because it was on sale on Steam. Okay, I got added my friends list because I have it. Hey, there you go. I am oh. a good engineer. Um, I don't have the TNG stuff yet. No, that's going to be next paycheck. <laughs> oh, I just got to pace a game, yeah. What's your uh, Steam name? Do it off channel so you don't get spammed with requests. Oh, yeah. we're. I didn't realize we were broadcasting. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have Steam turned off just because it is a drain on my internet. I'll give it to you after the session. Sure. Let me get a note. No yeah, I, uh, I keep us broadcasting through BRB just in case anyone has any uh, interbreak conversation. I just meet myself when I go away. All right. Well, let me uh, type a message uh, to our lovely Ferengi. Start when you're back. So I'll just add five minutes to the timer. That way anyone watching on YouTube is uh, easily able to find where the timer ends. Give him another uh, two minutes or so, and then we we'll we'll just go ahead and start up again. Hi right, guys, I'm back. Hey, look at that. Hey, there he is. All right, let me put us back on the right screen here. Do, 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 do. Boom, there we go. Okay, so uh, during the break, I managed to get a handout in for you guys. Uh, let's see, here they are. Uh, I'm calling them the G founders because they're gas. But uh, that is basically what uh, is talking to you. Very well. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and what did she say her name was, or he say his name was? Uh, it is a feminine voice, and they identify themselves as Protector Sentina of the Dominion. Greetings. My name is Dominus of the Dominion as well. Our vessel has some mild damage, and we're here to do repairs. And, uh, I guess answer some questions you may have about the fact that I'm also with the Dominion. Kind of tilts the head to the side, because, again, doesn't really have facial expressions. Uh, so the head kind of tilts to the side, and they say, You say you are from the Dominion, and yet I have never seen a species like you before. I'm from another universe. Neighboring one. It's quite the claim. Through use of technology, we were able to transfer ourselves over here. An experiment, if you will. Do you have any means of verifying this information or providing data that would do such? We can send you the information if you wish. Is there anything we can do to alleviate your concerns at the moment? We do not wish to have any engagement. Just communication. Simply transmit the data, and we will review it. I'll look to you, Gad, and nod. Okay, so he sends off a... Uh... Well, let me ask uh, this mostly of the players. So what would you like to be contained in the data he sends off? Uh, for me, I'm perfectly fine with, like... Uh, yeah, we're the Dominion. Uh, this is an experiment we were just using to test to see if we can move a ship over. Not like the full mission brief, but just what happened, how we moved over, that's that. So it would include general schematics for the mirror transition device then? I would say it would include the name and the reference of the device, but not like the schematics. Uh, the one like proof thing, though, is the quantum signature of the ship. Okay, I was waiting to see if I could get one of you to say that. Yep, all right. So you send that off. And uh, you see the figure just kind of remains motionless, but eventually they speak again. It's a it does appear that your quantum signature does not match ours. Thus, in light of no conflicting information, I am inclined to believe you. What is it you require of us specifically? We have some minor damage to our warp cord due to the transition, a side effect of the experiment. We just need some resources to repair it. I see. If you will provide a list of these materials, I will see to it that you are provided them. No, not to. You got again. Okay, sends it off. Would you like to come aboard, or would you like someone to come aboard your vessel? There's a pause. She says, Will my safety be guaranteed on your vessel? You have my word as the leader of the vessel, and I look to everyone, like, just to see if they understand how important that is. I'm assuming like you get, yeah. yeah, like I'm assuming you get understands, like, oh, you know, yeah. the founder's word. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, the being says very well. I do not know if you possess transporter technology. But in the past, we have found it does not work for us. Thus, I will be docking with your vessel directly. Please provide coordinates. No, not again to you, Gad. Okay. So, uh, as soon as she gets the coordinates, she says, Very well, I will see you momentarily. And for you, the screen goes dark. So everybody else, um, I mostly provided the image so you get a feel, but you have no idea what the other person looks like. It's only you, Gad and uh, Dominus that actually know what this individual looks like. I will prepare for a docking procedure with the vessel. Gad, first, make sure that they are welcome aboard properly. No weapons at all. Not in sight. Of course, Founder. And yeah. So, uh, 
I'm just gonna have this happen. Well, you know what? Let's make a let's make a roll of it because you guys could get some momentum. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's have our helm officer do a control con difficulty zero. And All right. Let's see if that gets you some uh, some momentum for you. Double twenties. He just rams the ship. <laughs> he rams the ship. Causes a, a galactic incident. <laughs> A universal incident. Helm operations focus? Oh, yeah. Don't blow up the ship. Okay. Hey, there you go. There's momentum. So, yeah. Uh, this Corvette here kind of comes right about here. Docks with you. And I'll put us a uh, theater of the mind map for this one. Unless you want to take them to the bridge. Uh, yeah, I'll have you guide meet her and then escort her. Okay, bridge. in that case, I will put us on the bridge. Alright, so, uh, Ygrad comes in, and in his wake is the uh, protector, as uh, she had introduced herself, and kind of steps onto the bridge, looks around, and says, Interesting, you appear to not have a public viewing screen of any sort. No, we have these headsets we use. Strange. Distraction. But uh, she walks. Down. She walks up to you specifically, Dominus, and says, "It is a pleasure meeting you in person again. I am Protector Sentina." Um, does she offer a hand or anything like that, or am I? Uh, she offers what is essentially a fist, and the fist is extended like a normal handshake would, but it's a fist instead of an open hand. So they're more gas, like you said, there, right? Um, yeah, so if you will imagine where uh, their head is, it is a swirling, gaseous, kind of dense nebula-like material. Alright, now I know loss is able to become uh, fog. Mm -hmm. I want to try and turn into this. To replicate. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's see, what would that role be? Hmm. Let's say, because you have morphogenic mastery, that this will be a difficulty four task. Ooh. And I would say, and of course you can argue differently, uh, I'm thinking fitness and con. Fitness because it's your body that's being uh, coming into play here, and con because it is your outward appearance and composure. Say control because I'm controlling my change. Um, control of not dispersing into just complete fog, but uh, mimicking it. I would say control would be a different role. It would be, I think, control medicine in that case. Uh, okay, I'll I'll take the fitness and con. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't like to stonewall you, but I feel like this is one of those important roles where it has to be one thing or the other. Uh, I'm going to use a momentum. Okay. For an extra dice. And I have a focus because of impersonation. Okay. And crossing my fingers. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take that complication. I and the complication is, uh, you, of course, begin to morph and change, but uh, whatever, however they keep their form, it eludes you. And the best you're able to offer is turning your entire right arm into mist. Yeah, I'll go with that then. It's like, oh. That's interesting. And I'll take her fist and... <laughs> okay. How so did you react she, to that, though? Yeah. So her head kind of tilts to the side again and says, Strange, you appear to have shape-shifting abilities. Yes, my kind does. Hmm. Do you well, possess any of your own? We do, yes. Though typically we remain in forms such as this contained by our armor. Fascinating. Tell me about your dominion. Are you explorers as well? 
So, again, doesn't really have facial expression, but her words are more guarded. Uh, her tone is of diplomacy, but she's definitely choosing her words carefully. And she says, We are an expansive empire. Prefer to remain uninvolved in the goings-on of the galaxy. Interesting. In my universe, we're called the Founders. We are more or less having the militaristic side of things led by and dealt with the Jem'Hadar, and also operations looked after by our Vorta. Very few of us venture far from home. I'm assuming it's different here, though. We tend to remain secluded, yes. So are you... Do you have any other species within the Dominion, such as the Jem'Hadar and the Vorta, like what I do here? So they, they kind of look around the bridge and say, There are a few species that share the Dominion with us, yes. Oh, do you have any questions for me? I'm simply curious what your objective was coming to what you claim is our universe. It simply cannot be for repairs. Well, the experiment to see if we could come into this realm. Before, it's only been theorized that uh, the device could be used for individuals, one or two at a time, not a whole ship. This was a scientific endeavor. And we found some flaws and some kinks we're working through. And I'm just pleased to have found that our counterparts, our mirrors, are just in the same location. I would have been upset and rather saddened if you were hostile and attacked us right away. We never really attack unless there's due cause for it. And while this conversation is going on, uh, I'm curious, uh, and this is for the other three of you, would any of you have either scanned them or their vessel by this point? I would have. I mean, if I can do it from tactical, then yeah, I would have scanned the ship. Okay. Uh, so I need you to roll me a reason. Well, let me ask you this. Are you looking at it from a science perspective, a securities perspective, or something else entirely? A uh, security perspective. Okay, in that case, it's going to be a reason security. Uh, the ship will assist with sensor security. And the difficulty here will be a three accounting for your advanced sensors. So right if I spend momentum to get a third die. Sure. Sure. Alright, so there's an assist from the ship. Good job, ship. And there's the three you need. Very nice. Uh so, uh I will tell you this much. You're having a hard trouble or a hard time getting a concrete reading on their Corvettes. And the reason for that is that while they appear to have similar technology to yours, and by that I mean they appear to have uh, sensor arrays that match yours, so anti-cloak sensors, uh, they appear to have E-War suites or jamming systems, uh, they appear to have a very extensive sensor array. When it comes to matters of engineering and security, though, it's not very clear. Uh, it appears that their energy source, their, their main power generator, is specifically designed to dampen and otherwise mask any outgoing sign of its presence. And this kind of technology is not unheard of in the main galaxy, but it's definitely not something any empire that I'm aware of at a character that has geared itself towards. Um, to kind of put it in a different perspective, 
Um, most ships are very easily detected on radar, and same with aircraft. But this, uh, this stealth corvette, as I'm calling it, it's more like a, uh, a stealth bomber, whereas it's very hard to detect on radar. Or at least it deflects it in a certain way uh, that makes getting a reading hard. Uh, can I monitor uh, the communications between the three Mirror Dominion ships? Um, you can certainly try to listen in, but there would be a task involved. Okay, and even if I can't like listen in and like decrypt them, mm -hmm. I would still want to monitor the amount of communication and where it's going. Okay, uh, let's call this a reason science. Now let's do reason engineering. Oh, hold on. And we don't have any extra stuff. What did you say the difficulty was? Uh, so it's going to be a reason engineering at, I'm going to say, a difficulty of three as well. And the ship is going to assist you with, uh, let's do sensors. No, let's do comm and science. All right. It's probably not going to happen, um, but I'm going to try because I don't think I have a focus for this. That's no help from the ship. Yeah, two successes needed one more. So yeah, um, if there are transmissions going between these ships, uh, you're not really picking up anything. Okay. And I would say that uh, unless Talakan wants to keep what he's found uh, hidden, that you would have access to the same data he has. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not keeping it hidden. I would actually try to send that out to. Um, I don't know if there's like data readouts at different stations, but yeah, yeah. Without without vocally like yelling it across the bridge where the protector could hear it. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, so, I was assuming most of these scans happened before they came on board. Okay. Well, you know, either way, uh, everyone on the bridge is able to see this information. Um, just given what happens, the only thing that's gonna I'm gonna do while uh, the protectors here is just sit back quietly, but look like always making eye contact with the protector, and mm. kind of just. If I can get the protector to initiate conversation with me, that would be great, but I don't I haven't yet seen an opportunity to initiate that myself. Okay. So, uh returning to the conversation going on, uh protector kind of swivers their head around, takes a look around and says, "Your vessel is impressive. Are there many like it where you come from?" This is an experimental prototype of one design, but there are many. We too have an empire that we must keep defended and guarded. Hmm. And Tell me, she's have... gonna roll something off screen. Hmm. Okay. Have to roll anything to counter, considering my focuses? Yes, you need to roll me a what is that, a presence plus com uh, con? Or a presence plus command. Uh, the I'll difficulty command. for you is a two. And do any of my focuses apply? Well, let me take a gander at your focuses. Uh, deception would apply here. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, you know, she kind of looks around, looks back at you and says, I get the sense you're telling me the truth so far, but that you're omitting some very crucial details. Well, we are new, and we are making first contact. I want to tell you everything outright, just in case that it might offend. It's a delicate process, engaging with someone you don't know yet. Hmm. Well, if you are nervous talking in the open like this, perhaps we could go somewhere more private. Oh. The only private place I can really think of is my quarters.
So she just kind of stares at you blankly. Or at least you think she is. Again, no real eyes to tell. <laughs> if you'd like, follow me. All right. So as you head on out, uh, the protector is going to kind of stop or at least pause uh, next to uh, Kron and says, you were interested in our conversation more so than anyone else here on this bridge. Did you have anything to add? Uh, yes, I come here representing the Ferengi Alliance, a uh, partner with the Dominion from our universe. You see, we are entrepreneurs, and knowledge is profit, and it is an honor to make first contact with yourself. Hmm, I see. And then she just kind of looks straight ahead and follows Dominus out, or uh, Dominus if, out. If, oh. if I might... She pauses. Uh, I would like to offer you a gift as a symbol of gratitude from the Dominion, uh, from the Fringi Alliance. Uh, and I hand out a data, uh, whatever storage device our data is on. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ferengi rules of acquisition, best possible formatting. <laughs> nice. It's actually in, it's actually in papyrus font. This one. So uh, she takes the uh, data unit and looks at it and pockets it and says, "Very well. I will review this later." And then, unless anyone else stops her, she does depart with Dominus. Um, but that does momentarily uh, give you all time to talk on the bridge and uh, to start things off you gad just kind of looks between uh, Talak Khan and the rest of you and says were I, any of you able to get concrete readings on their ship I mean I see that we've tried but, mm, excuse me that we've tried but it seems that their technology is eluding us I've sent details of my scan to you to be made available. Yes, I see. I'm particularly interested in whatever this power source might be. Uh, specialist, have you any ideas? Not yet, but I am working on a solution to this problem. Uh, if you'll give me more time, I will continue uh, endeavoring upon this. Very well. And uh, I guess out of character, I'm curious, how are you attempting to overcome this, what is essentially a complication, but like, how are you approaching this? Um, well, I'm going to wait until uh, the protector reads her copy of the Ferengi Rules of Acquisition. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to upload a, uh, a virus which sends me, uh, secretly sends me uh, readouts from all of their computer systems. Okay. And Ferengis. I like it. And if if they find that, it will be linked to uh uh rule of acquisition fifty nine. Free advice is seldom cheap. Okay. Alright. So, uh while all that's going on, I'll put us back on theater of the mind. Uh, Dominus, uh, let's say that uh, you take the uh, projector uh, to a more secluded space. It doesn't have to be your quarters. Um, there's probably a room you could kick people out of. I mean, you are a founder after all. Um, but the, the main thing is that uh, you supposedly have no more prying ears. Do you have any questions for me? I have a few for you, but I want to see what you ask first. You say that you defend yourselves. I get the sense that you aren't being entirely truthful with that. That you do more than just defend. You're shapeshifters. Just like I. Just like my people. Solids have hunted us for a long time. We're now in a position where we don't have to fear them anymore. Does that mean you actually have an empire? Yes. It expands what we call the Gamma Quadrant. 
don't know how far you ex uh, your empire expands, but ours is considerable. And I don't know how large the Dominion Empire is, but I'll give her the light year size. Okay. So, you know, thinks for a moment and replies, I will not comment on how large our holdings are, but I think you will find that we detest any sort of warmongering around here. I understand. After all, you're more gas-like. We're more liquid. What changed? How did this come about? You wish to know how we arrived at our current form? Yes. I suppose there's no harm in at least telling you the basics. Uh, we were once, uh, I guess you would call them solids, though for us that's a derogatory term, but since you've used it, I will use it as well. The We were once solid, and quite literally due to a cascading chain of happenstance and I suppose a interesting interaction between our own DNA and that of our native world we eventually transcended our normal physical forms to become what you see today interesting different path of evolution different path of thought as well you are protectors, what your title says. That is correct. Sounds like another organization we've come across. Protectors of themselves as well. Uh, tell me, have you discovered a way to what would be known as the Alpha Quadrant? Wormhole. We are not aware of any wormholes. No transit. What, uh, what does your empire do? Well, we keep to ourselves, mostly. You don't go out and force any rule on anyone? I think you'll find that where you have an empire, we have more a confederacy or a republic. That's truly fascinating. Well, I look forward to getting those supplies we need to repair our vessel. Uh, tell me, have uh, you encountered any other hostile forces within your space? Why do you think we prefer to remain our, by ourselves and not confrontational with other species? I'm taking that as a yes. What are they? Who are they? I want to see if there are similarities with uh, enemy factions. Roll me another presence, con, or command, and I'll roll for her. Uh, would I have a focus? Yep, you would have deception again. Because what I'm getting, or at least the vibe she's getting, is that you're specifically asking if your enemies are present here as well. Um, yeah. But let's or what see. enemies she may have. Right, right, right. Oh wow. Wow, that's 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 three crits right there. Okay. Good for you, Setna. Uh so she says actually quite literally what I just said, and says, I get the feeling you're more interested in whether or not your enemies are present here. Well, yes. Uh not gonna lie, jumping to another universe is a contingency if anything should fail. I want to see my people survive. Something I hope you can understand. I want to gather information on what threats there may be, if we have to make such an occurrence. I'm not gonna say that's gonna happen anytime soon. Could be years, decades, centuries from now. It you not know, even happen. Hmm. Well, unless there's anything else, I shall return to my ship to make sure you get the supplies you wish. Very well. I'll escort you to the airlock. Alright. So, I'll put us back on this map to kind of...
kind of show what's going on. So, uh, um, I have some. Oh, oh, sorry, GM. No, you go for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, during that conversation, mm-hmm. I'm going to send a message to both uh, K Ron and Good Lord. What's her? How do you say your Jemhadar's name, Bren? Talaclan. Talaclan. And Talaclan, it says. Because we know there's three of those ships, correct? Correct. In the quick reading I've done, I'll put Ferengi, Rules of Acquisition, Rule 193. Trouble comes in threes. All right, well, unless anyone wants to respond to that. Uh, so the protector is taken back to her vessel and uh, the Corvette uh, uncouples from your vessel and goes back into kind of a holding position. And you pretty much wait. So there is some time for you all to do little inter-RP scenes if you wish, but otherwise I can skip ahead. Uh... I can't think of anything except just to tell Ygred to try and scan around, see if we can connect and listen to anything, anything not secured. Actually brings up a good idea that Ygred would have. Um, so I'll put us a moment now, keep us on this map. Uh, so when you return to the bridge, uh, Ygred kind of uh, pulls you aside, Dominus, and says, uh, Founder, I again do not wish to uh, presume that you haven't already thought of this, but would it not be shall we say, good for the Dominion if we were able to acquire this technology of theirs that lets them hide amongst the background radiation of space. I was thinking of that. Tell me Rule of you're... acquisition number 10. Greed is eternal. I'm proud of you, Vorta. Tell me, Greg, what's the risk of the ship if we go into combat with a micro warp core? Well, so long as the engines are not hit directly, I believe we will suffer little damage. Though, if Talakan's scans are correct, we do not know what type of weaponry they possess. And going off everything you've seen so far, do you think we stand a chance? I believe with you at the helm, Founder, anything is possible. Very well. Where are the Jemadar boarding parties? Of course, Founder. Uh, might I offer a suggestion? Yes. Rule of Acquisition 194. It's always good business to know about new customers before they walk in your door. Now, in this case, I believe it should be before we walk in their door. Uh, if you give me enough time... I may be able to find out a bit of more information about our guests. Very well. Let's say... She has to get us these supplies, the minerals, and then some repairs. When we get the minerals, let's see if anything has changed. If not, then we'll proceed with our new plan. I will put my, pa- my wrists back together and my fingers spread apart. As you wish, Founder. All right. So uh, there is indeed a bit of a, I would say, a couple hours, maybe six hour, two to six hour break uh, where you're just sort of waiting. But eventually uh, a fourth Corvette, and I'm not going to put him on the map unless you want to start shooting at it. Uh, but a fourth Corvette uh, shows up, docks with you, uh, offloads the supplies you requested, and then uncouples and flies back into the darkness of space. Uh, the three do remain uh, visible to you, though, at the moment. You got, did you see that? I did, Founder. I think trying to test them may cost us. Indeed, we do not know how many of them are lurking out there. Hey, Ron, have you found anything yet? Uh... Has has the um, founder or protector opened their rules of acquisition yet? Uh, that you don't know. 
uh, there is the chance that their computer systems might not even, uh, the virus might not even work on them. So you either would have to think by this point, uh, she just hasn't opened it, she's thrown it away, or she has tried to read it and, you know, your virus wasn't effective. Uh, nothing yet. Unfortunately, it is uh, nothing I can do to speed that along. But I will uh, go down now and begin repairing the device. Yes? That and make sure the gym of doors to repair into warp core as well. As you wish. So, uh, I'm going to whisper you something on Discord. But you guys can keep talking while I do that. Dominus is annoyed. He doesn't like not knowing the potential threats out there. He'd rather have a clean strike, but it doesn't feel like getting stranded into space either. Yeah, I'm not too pleased by being surrounded by these three ships and why they're still hanging about. Shall I prepare evasive actions, Founder, just in case? Yes, I think that'll be the best course. Interesting, they call themselves protectors. They're able to shapeshift, but yet they have to contain themselves within their suits. That's a limitation they have. It's good to know. First, did you get any scans of her while she's aboard the ship? No, Founder, I did not. Shame. That's an oversight you'll correct next time we have a guest board the vessel. Yes, Founder. All right. Then who's... So, yeah. Uh, down in uh, engineering. Uh, well or the lab, whatever you want to do your work in. Uh, it's fairly simple to get things working in, in ah, it's, it's easy to get things in working order, but it is still an extended task. Um, the task in question would be a work track of 10, a uh, magnitude of three, a default difficulty of three, and uh, we'll say a control engineering as a base task. All right, one second. I need to look one roll up for my miracle worker talent. Sure. Well, let's see if I even pass. So it's difficulty three, you said? Yep. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use... Oh, would my, my, pr my previous focus for transporters and replicators be up for grabs again? Mm-hmm. That it would. So that also means testing a theory. Um, I'll add two to threat to buy a fourth die. Okay. Yeah, so much threat right now. Uh, what's what? What's the task? Uh, default is control engineering, but you can certainly give me an argument for something else. Oh, well, that's a seventeen for me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be happy with that one. Okay. I see green. All right, so that is uh, two momentum for you. And yeah, go ahead and roll me a seven challenge die to see how much work you get done. All right, so uh, that is going to be seven work done, which is enough for a breakthrough. And your miracle worker comes into play because you've rolled an effect and achieved a breakthrough. So you achieve two breakthroughs. So, narratively, what this means is using the materials that were delivered to you, you're able to replace all but one final component uh, in the device. However, the one thing you're noticing is that even with the repairs, something is off about the device. You think it maybe has one or two uses at best left in it. All right. Uh, next time I get a chance, I'll... Finish the job. 
Okay. I mean, you could do that right now if you wanted to. Oh, I'll, I'll do that right now. Okay. Yeah. Another uh, another control engineering and uh, two breakthroughs means it's only a difficulty one. I'll be rolling three dice because of the talent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, let's do seventeen to twenty for your complication range. Okay. I see green again. Uh, that's one complication. Yep, and you can spend the two momentum you just got from that to make it go away. I'll do that. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead and roll me some challenge die here. I'm pretty sure you're going to get the three you need, but yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you've uh, you've got the uh, device working in tip-top shape. Uh, as like a narrative mo a thing, uh, any Jim Hinnart engineers with me are using whatever uh, tricorders, and they say, no, 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 the pitch is too high. I'm just doing it with my ears. Okay. Very good. So, yeah, uh, I'm assuming you back to the bridge to report you've finished your repairs? Um, I'm going to make a quick stop at the transporter room. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to punch in a few commands uh, to lock onto my uh, bio sign, mm -hmm. and then I'll go back to my station. Okay. All right. Does the Jemadar on duty look at him and go, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I would think the Jemadar would look at you questioningly like, what are you doing, Ferengi? We overloaded the EPS. We overloaded the EPS conduits the first time we acted the device, so I need to make sure that everything running through this system is compatible with the device itself. Look, I know you're an excellent warrior, but I'm the engineer and the specialist. Trust me! Roll me uh, presence plus... Engineering difficulty two. Yeah, the uh, the Gemadar just kind of looks at you, looks at his console, and says, "I fail to see why locking under your signal would be at all needed for this endeavor." Ah, that is an excellent question. You see, we need a baseline, a control for the experiment. We need to... The system needs the quantum signature from our universe. Kind of looks at you blankly like he has no idea what the hell you're talking about. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I just... Unless he stops me, I finish my work and leave... Uh, although, in, my back, in the back of my head... He might not believe me. Yeah. And though, of course, you're not going to be aware of this, back up on the bridge, and I'll actually put us back on the bridge map for this. Uh, back up on the bridge, uh, Egad does turn to you, Dominus, and say, uh, it appears the Ferengi has locked a transporter signal on himself. I do not know why, but he has. Interesting. Any other commands to go along with it? Not that I'm aware of, Founder. Then for the transporter room that he's used, have it go into maintenance mode. Of course, Founder. We needed to do maintenance anyway. Indeed. And it is about that time that, uh, Kron, you show up on the bridge. Report on the device. The device is fully operational. Good. If it works and there's no more side effects, you might find yourself very profitable within the Dominion. No. Absolutely. Although I should tell you that these devices only have a limited number of charges in them. They will I'm need to sure. be replaced uh, periodically. Well, I'm sure with your skill and knowledge you can make more. And if you do, who knows, you may have your own planet to yourself. A cousin of mine had a moon. A planet is better. <laughs> I'll make sure it has plenty of moons then. Very yes. well. You're good. Uh, 
take a look and uh, see if there's any of our enemies kicking around in this universe. They might be our friends considering the opposition of our minion here. Course founder. Uh, so he begins to make uh, the command to leave the Picara system. And uh, as your ship starts to move away, uh, he says, uh, there is an incoming transmission from the Protector founder. I'll put the headset on and turn it on. All right, so you see Setna again, and they say, I wish you luck on finding whatever it is you're actually after out there. And I wish long life and reign for the Dominion. Doesn't reply, but does end the comms there. Let's see. Enemies of old. Oh. Let's push out to the edge of the gamma as far as we can. See what we get. All right. So, uh, if I understand your intention correctly, uh, you're looking for what? The Herc? Yes. All right. So, uh, as you uh, maneuver the ship away and uh, get it going towards the edge of the galaxy, um, I think this is actually a good time to bookend, and uh, we will resume next session. Because I feel like the Herc are going to be a whole thing. And I don't <laughs> want us to end up like last session where we were mid-combat and had to rush things. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully you guys had fun with this little taste of the Dominion. And uh, we will pick up with this group. What is that? The 28th. Um, so players, stick around for a little bit. But for anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, thank you for watching. Hopefully you had a good time. And we'll see this group in a couple of weeks. See ya.